My name is Dave Wilson, and this is The Photo Breakdown. Photo Breakdown is a podcast where I talk with a photographer sharing the story of a specific photograph, technique, or business win. I'm your host, Scott Wyden-Kivowitz, and this is The Photo Breakdown. Let's break it down. Hello, my name is Scott Wyden-Kivowitz, your host of Photo Breakdown, and today I'm sitting down with, well, I'm going to say Scott from another place it. a different type of scott how should we how should we call this well so i'm talking to my friend dave wilson who's doesn't have the word the name scott in his name but he is originally from scotland Indeed. so he's a scott now, interestingly <laughs> enough this year is the year i've lived in the u.s longer than scotland so you could argue that i'm no more american than scottish but hey that is really cool that yeah. is really cool and man I've, I've known you a long time at this point Forever, a long time Forever. <laughs> not quite so, as far back as the film days but almost right right yeah. just 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 about we're, we're pretty close mm -hmm. but <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about a really fun photo that not only took you a lot of work in camera but definitely took you a lot of work in the editing process so i'm really excited to dive into this but before we do i got two questions for you okay the first question if you could remove all physical mental and financial barriers and constraints what project would you do in photography gosh mm. i like the, giving the one easy that, ones the one that comes to the top of my mind right now is to go to antarctica and south georgia they're Ooh. right at the top of my bucket list and it's definitely a financial constraint actually it's a time constraint as well because it's a minimum three-week trip to do it i think that would be high on my list if it's something closer to home i would like to do a whole lot more shooting of uh, small town rodeos in texas i totally enjoy mm. that so one cheap one one expensive one how's that sound <laughs> sounds good sounds good so next question who has been the biggest influence in your life in my life or my photographic life you can answer it however oh, you'd like James. Let's stick to photography because that's easier. I've had lots of influences in my life and I wouldn't want to pick sure. anyone out who's probably still alive. <laughs> Biggest photographic influence. Even that's tricky, mind you. I'm a big fan, this is cliche, I know, of uh, Ansel Adams. I love black and white mm -hmm. landscape work and his is obviously the tip of the crop. Another person actually who's still alive and who I want to meet someday is Joe McNam. His book, The Moment It Clicks, was an enormously important book to me. I learned so much from it and I would like to buy Joe McNam a beer sometime. You hear so, that, Joe? <laughs> I'm going to make sure that he hears this. I sat in a workshop with him uh, last year, yeah. uh, and he seemed to be everybody as nice in the workshop as he seems to be in his books and on his online presence. So, yeah, Joe McNally, I think. Awesome. I'm also That's extraordinarily jealous of his fabulous environmental portrait shirt. It's just so mm. good. Yeah. 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 Plus, plus uh, you and I are both Nikon Nikon nerds. So. Actually, um. not true anymore. But, <laughs> oh, you switched? I switched two years ago, yeah. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, now, this is an icon picture you... tonight, but I, I switched to Olympus two years ago because oh, my Nikon gear was just too heavy for my old bones to handle anymore. Carrying a couple of Nikon bodies and long telephotos around a racetrack for a day was killing me. Yeah. And yeah. So I oh, I, I remember that you that I remember you were um, trying Olympus at, mm -hmm. at a rodeo, and that I guess that was about two years ago. You probably got hooked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I've switched. I actually still got some Nikon gear for sale here, but. I'm now an OMDEM one Mark II person. I've actually got three Olympus bodies in there, and I love them. Wow. And I keep being amazed at how good the image quality is. I keep thinking mm -hmm. I'll be disappointed, and I never am, except in super low light situations. But the the quality of the pictures I'm getting out of these cameras is great. So I'm delighted. That's with awesome. Them. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know what? The photo that we're going to be looking at today, even if you were using a Micro Four Thirds sensor, the uh, the technique that you used, yeah, it would work fine. Yeah, it'll work fine. Mm -hmm. Before we dive in, this episode is sponsored by my lead generation course for photographers called More Leads, More Clients. Yes, if you would like to increase the leads you're generating on your photography site, you can use the strategies I teach in my course. Access it at scottwyden.com slash leads. Let's break down the photo. Okay. Before you explain the photo, first, where was this photographed right so this photograph was taken in taipei in taiwan specifically from a location called elephant mountain which is a fairly well-known tourist viewpoint i guess in the mm. city 
back in 2013 when I was shooting with the D700. Do you want me to give me some more background on it or should I leave yeah, that Yeah, so, so let's talk, uh, first, let's let's explain what we're looking at here. We're looking yeah. at a, a beautiful land, a cityscape rather, I was going to say landscape, mm-hmm. but cityscape and a lot of buildings that are obviously tall, but then one super tall yep. um, building right almost smack in the middle, a little off center, mm-hmm. which is great with beautiful mm-hmm. colors all around and tones that go from bright to dark because those the trees in the bottom mm-hmm. are dark but then you've got the bright lights in the from the buildings and you've got this beautiful sky the colors are gorgeous and so i'm looking at the flicker one because uh, mm-hmm. you've got on your yeah, website you have no flicker yeah. yeah the flicker one looks it's just you make this thing this sucker full full screen and it just like pops it pops it's, off the screen it's nice and crisp yeah. yeah so so yeah let's talk about first how did you get there like what why were you there how did you get there was it a What's the story behind so, actually getting this? Yeah, this was spot. back in 2013. I was working with a client in Taiwan and I had to go and visit them to do some support. And the way it worked out, I managed to stay there for two weeks. And the guy that was showing me around, the guy that was my host, was <clears throat> in fact another photography uh, buff. So we would go to the client's office during the day. And then the minute things, you know, the office cooled down a bit, we would race out and he'd show me around the city and we'd go and take pictures and have a really awesome time exploring the streets of Taipei and various restaurants and things. And it was just a glorious two weeks. I actually spent a weekend there and got to tour some of the northern end of the island with him as well. And it was, it was fantastic. And this was one of the locations, in fact, it was the only location I'd actually researched before being over there. I'd seen pictures taken from here and thought, you know, I, I absolutely love Blue Hour Skylines. I want to take the shot. So I'd arranged with Charlie, my host, to spend one evening climbing the mountain and trying to get this picture. And it, it, it was an interesting evening. We, we met at the base of Taipei 101, which is that huge building just offset from the center of the picture. It used to be the world's tallest building, but it's not anymore. But it's a fascinating structure. It's huge, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, and he ended up being slightly late. And we, we were trying to time it for sunset, obviously, to get there and get set up before sunset and then shoot as the sun was going down. And he ended up being late and we got stuck in traffic. And uh, he turns up on his moped and we ended up, racing through the streets of Taipei with me hanging on to the back of his moped, <laughs> holding a camera bag and a stupidly heavy um, metal tripod. tripod. <laughs> um, but we, we survived. And then we got to the base of this mountain. And I guess you've probably seen Kung Fu Panda, you know, the gazillion stairs. It was like that. And the sun was going down as we got to the bottom. We had to race up 1,200 stairs or something to this viewpoint. And when we arrived, there were like oh, 200 photographers vying for right. places like, on this viewpoint that was probably 25 feet across and i thought oh gosh after all that effort you know come ten thousand miles miss the shot right but i took a few through gaps in heads and eventually i asked charlie nicely if he would ask one of the guys in front of me to let me in for two minutes to shoot one panorama and uh, someone nicely moved out of the way for a bit and let me in and i shot this one set of frames for the panorama yes so it's it's a panorama yeah. but it's also to to make your life even more complicated, it's also an it's an HDR it's panorama. It's an HDR panorama, yeah. So it's it's five <laughs> vertical frames, each a bracket of five shots. So there's uh, twenty five individual exposures used to make up this. Yeah. Line. So so you're like let let me squeeze in, let me mm-hmm. squeeze in, so I can get a panorama. Yep. But I'm just gonna make it more complicated, and I'm gonna bracket each. Yeah, and section of this panorama I'm and to see what the, the longest exposure I think was probably something like 16 seconds I think for each for the long you know the, the brightest exposure yeah. so it right. probably took me about I don't know three minutes four minutes perhaps maybe less than that to shoot the whole panorama yeah so you've 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 taught a lot about HDR over the years and I'm I'm I think I know the answer to this but in 2013 what was your go-to software for one for creating the HDRs uh-huh. and two stitching to the panorama. Right, so the HDRs were created with Photomatics Pro at that time, and I still use it today actually for some of my work. Panorama stitching, I'm trying to remember whether this was before or after I started using PT GUI. It would either be Photoshop or PT GUI I used to stitch the panorama. It was certainly before the days that I used Lightroom to do it, I think. Yeah, it must be because of PSD. Yeah, must Lightroom before Photoshop. Recent, I think. Yeah, I must use yeah. Photoshop because the, the final result here is a PSD file. So it says, I'm looking at the EXIF on Flickr. Mm-hmm. If this is if this is accurate based on the metadata of the photo, it was F6.7, which uh-huh. at first glance you would think 6.7, 
you know, the depth of field, it still might be a little blurry in the background, but, uh, or like the different planes, but you got a lot of detail throughout. A so, lot of it is yeah. really <clears throat> in focus. It's 40 millimeters F6.7. And normally I would shoot with a smaller aperture than that, but I wanted to try and get my shutter speeds, you know, fairly low. So I wouldn't take up too much time from the guy who had uh, kindly given up his spot, but there was a 40 millimeters and nothing was particularly close. I mean, let's see, I can't remember which cropped version I have in Flickr. Yeah, the version in Flickr doesn't have any foliage on the left-hand side. There's actually a tree overhanging the left that I've cropped off and it was slightly black. It was moving actually, so it was ghosted. So I got rid of that. But there's nothing really in the frame any closer than probably 100 feet away, with the possible exception of maybe some leaves on the left. And they're pretty right. sharp too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some leaves. Actually, but they were moving around. There was wind at the time, so most of the leaves close by are blurred by moving. Being, by moving. Yeah. And uh, aside from that, you know, the, the f6.7 40 millimeters at 200 feet to infinity or something will be in focus. So. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. a problem. It, <clears throat> It it looks it looks absolutely crisp throughout, which is amazing. It, the colors are so vibrant. And they're real, by the way. And, I didn't 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 cheat on the color. I mean, I may have slightly tweaked the contra the saturation a bit, but I certainly didn't add any color to this. That was pretty much what I was seeing. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and the Nikon D seven hundred that using at the time, that thing had had you know that was ahead ahead of its game for color rendering. It was a rendering, great you know? camera. It was a 12 <laughs> yeah. megapixel camera, but I shot it for years and I still like it. I, I sold it a couple of years ago now, but uh, it was a fantastic camera. I got a lot of good yeah. pictures out of it. And this was taken actually with the 28 to 300 lens, which is one I used to shoot a lot for travel because I can carry one lens. Actually, I used right. to carry two lenses. I carried that and the 14 to 24 and it would cover everything I wanted for travel. And it was a super lens. You know, for, for the price, it was amazingly sharp. So, oh yeah yeah that was yeah. a that was an incredible lens yeah well thank you so much for breaking down this photo with me sure. i have another question for you <laughs> and i'm gonna throw you off what should i have asked you but didn't what should i have asked you but didn't about this picture let me think you asked me about photomatics you could ask me what hdr software i currently <laughs> use or why i'm not doing hdr quite as often now as i used to I'd like to hear that one because I, I, yeah. I know my reasoning, but why don't you do HDR as because much? Because camera to? sensors are a lot better now and I can get most of what I need mm. in a single frame rather than having to bracket. Now that said, this kind of shot, I would still be bracketing today and still do. Um, blue are, yeah, definitely. You would. Uh, if I want to get the, the balance of the sky and also the highlights in the windows of the buildings, HDR is still the way I'd go here. Otherwise I get blown out highlights. Do you think that it's maybe... You would still do it because of the Micro no. Four Thirds sensor, and it's no. I'd still do it even. No, I, I, I think a, it's just, still have a D810, and yeah. it has great dynamic range, and it'd still shoot HDR for that kind of thing. But again, yeah. purely because of the building, the building lights will will not be mm -hmm. as well defined in a single frame, based on my experience. To to sort of circle back to the what you your other question that I didn't hmm. ask you would you would you use photomatics if you were to redo so this again or would you use depends. something else these days I still use photomatics but I also use Aurora HDR mm -hmm. I like Aurora for natural looking HDRs and I, I far prefer photomatics yeah. for the artistic stuff so anything with a bunch of texture or grungy feel I definitely use photomatics it does a far nicer job Aurora if I want something that doesn't look like an HDR I'll use that typically because I've got some presets I've made there that I really like yeah. So it just depends on what you're going for for this photo today. Yeah, I mean, I, today. I shot a bunch of pictures in Fort Pickens in Florida a couple of weeks back, and they were just screaming out for HD for uh, photomatics because they were inside an old fort with moss and grunge on the walls and everything, and the texture was mm. just gorgeous in photomatics. You know, it's one of those like I haven't shot an HDR in so long. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I miss it, and sometimes I'm in a way glad I'm not doing it anymore and trying other techniques, mm -hmm. but. You know, you look at a beautiful HDR and you're just like, that's how it's supposed to be done. Oh. Well, if you look at a beautiful <laughs> HDR, you shouldn't necessarily be able to say it's an HDR, right. let's be honest. Exactly. But back that's when you true. and I Very started true. doing HDR and got to know each other in the first place, we were just bracketing everything, which was ridiculous looking yeah. back on it. But, <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> you know, the, the, the techniques mature into a tool that you use when you need it rather than something you just do all the time. Yes. Yep. 100%. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, Dave, where can our listeners connect with you online? Um, Dave Wilson Photography, pretty much everywhere, I think. Instagram um, is at Dave Wilson Photography, Dave Wilson Photography .com, Dave Wilson Photography on Flickr, Dave Wilson Photography on Facebook, 
I think I've got it covered now. <laughs> and we're going to be, sh I'll be sure to, to uh, link to your website. And of course, this photo on Flickr, I'm going to link to both in the show notes. Yeah. So the Flickr one's thank better. you. Okay. Yeah. If you want to get the full, the full look at this full screen and everything, definitely mm -hmm. check out the Flickr, but be sure to check out Dave's rest of Dave's photos, either by browsing his, his Flickr gallery or by going to his website or both. And uh, if you are into rodeo, definitely check out Dave's rodeo photos too. Um, because they're also quite fantastic. And I mentioned earlier, Dave is originally from Scotland, but he's now in Texas. And, you know, obviously that's, well, rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks, Dave, for joining me tonight. Yeah, I, yes, we are recording this in a it's evening for me. It's uh, like a little after seven o'clock for me. Thank you so much for listening to Photo Breakdown for the show notes. And to see the photo shared today, visit photobreakdown.com. 